So how much battery drain can you expect on your Tesla? If you happen to leave cabin overheat protection and sentry mode both enabled while you're away for an extended period of time. Now I did a video earlier this year where we were gone for 13 plus days and I had left my Tesla parked in my garage unplugged and I wanted to see what kind of battery drain I would expect from that. Now I left both cabin overheat protection off, it wasn't really needed since it was in the middle of the winter, but I also disabled sentry mode. I saw a total degradation of about 6% on my, my battery. And like I said, that was over the course of roughly 13 days. Now, what if we left sentry mode on and cabin overheat protection? How does this impact the drain on the battery? So here's the context of the test I conducted. Last month, we went on a little family vacation down in Orlando, Florida, and we happened to take my wife's long range Model 3. Now I did two separate tests while we were gone. One on my wife's Model 3 when it was parked in the sweltering heat of Orlando and the other on my Model 3 which was parked here back in Michigan. Both tests had sentry mode enabled and in the case of my wife's car it had cabin overheat protection on because we were constantly seeing the temperatures of the cabin exceeding 100 degrees. So how much energy did my wife's Tesla lose during this limited test that I did. So we parked my wife's Tesla at the resort on March 29th at about 8 p.m. and the current battery percent was sitting at uh, 37 percent. The following morning, March 30th at about 9 30, just over 13 hours later, the state of charge on her battery was sitting at 32 percent. That's a loss of 5 percent over those 13 hours. Now if you extrapolate that, you're looking at a about a 10% loss over the course of a full day. That's with sentry mode on as well as cabin overheat protection. Now, like I mentioned, it was hot when we were down there. At 9 a.m. in the morning when I checked the vehicle, her cabin was sitting at 90 degrees. Now, how much did my Tesla lose when it was parked back in Michigan? So while I was conducting the test on my wife's vehicle, I was running the same type of test on my vehicle parked back home. Same parameters for the test. I had sentry mode enabled and cabin overheat protection on. Now, one quick caveat of this test, my son was dog sitting back at our house in Michigan. There were a number of sentry events that were kicked off. So that very well could have an impact on this test here because sentry mode was constantly firing. I started monitoring at 8.05 PM on March 29th, same as my wife's test. And we finished monitoring at on April 2nd at, it was 2.45 p.m. So just under four full days. In that time, I saw the state of charge decline from 83% to 50%. That's a loss of 33% over those four days. I was really shocked by these results. In my previous test, we lost 6% over the course of 13 days. And keep in mind, that was in the middle of the winter with sentry mode disabled. Now in these tests with sentry mode enabled as well as cabin overheat, overheat protection, I'm seeing a loss that's the equivalent of roughly 10% a day. If you do plan on parking your vehicle for an extended period of time and it's not going to be plugged in, I do recommend that you shut off sentry mode and cabin overheat protection. The last thing you're going to want to come back to after a nice relaxing vacation is a Tesla that is not going to get you home you're going to save a significant amount of energy by doing so. I'm seeing a loss of roughly a half a percent a day with sentry mode disabled versus 10% a day with sentry mode and cabin overheat protection both on. That is a significant difference. Hope you all found this helpful and we'll see you in the next video.